Columbus SCOTUS destroying Ord and Wayne to make it here to this C1 state championship. And these two teams are very familiar. They have met up four times, three times so far in the season. This will be the fourth meeting. And SCOTUS is 3-0 against the Grand Island Central Catholic Crusaders. Working with me again this year, of course, my partner Kathy Wieskamp. And, well, there's a dynasty built in Columbus, and Grand Island Central Catholic has been on the short end of that for several years now, trying to get a little revenge today and trying to knock the Shamrocks off in the match that matters most, the state championship match. That's right. These two teams have a great rivalry and, again, a great respect for one another. And I know Grand Island Central Catholic concept going into this is this one that ma this one's the one that matters this season. Those we learn from, we can use that in this match tonight. Scotus and Grand Island still Number making their way. Number 17, Katie Dowd. Number 16, Whitney Roush. Number 15, Jennifer Dunning. Number 14, Natalie Moravec. Number 13, Laura Ganewa. Number 12, Annie Seitz. Number 11, Kayla Krolikowski. Number 10, Jenny Green. Number 9, Ember Kulis. Number seven, Mary Wagoner. Number six, Bridget Chapleski. Number five, Jamie Redmond. Yes, Jamie! Number four, Jody Schuers. And number three, Megan Bowden. Head coach for the Crusaders is Sharon Zavala, assisted by Sydney Patel. And now, for the visiting team, the Columbus Scotus Shamrocks. Number 14, Mandy Schumacher. Number 13, Heidi Sabota. Number 12, Lynn Weeder. Number 11, Michelle Flint. Number 10, Haley Belt. Number 9, Renee Byerman. Number 8, Taylor Harsh. Number seven, Ann Byerman. Number six, Steph Lyons. Number five, Nikki Van Ekren. Number four, Laura Dolezal. Number three, Taryn Ketter. Number two, Jennifer Sackett. And number one, Nicole Milak. Head coach for the Shamrocks is John Peterson, assisted by Janet Dooley and Julie Blazer. Tonight's game official. There are the teams, Grand Island Central Catholic and Columbus Scotus, the number one and number two seeds in this tournament. Scotus, the number one seed. The Crusaders of Grand Island Central Catholic, the number two seed in this Class C1 state championship run. And these two teams, as we mentioned, very familiar with one another. What does that mean when you meet for the fourth time, Kathy, and you know what everybody's going to do? There's really not any surprises. What, is it, what does it do for the match tonight? Well, I, I think there may be some changes in game plans. Again, things that worked last time, will they want to make sure they implement this time. Things that were problem areas, they'll try and correct those. So going into tonight's match, they have a lot of information that they can use, but it really comes down to who's going to execute. And again, it's state championship, and anybody can do turn the tide at any time two teams with a ton of tradition Grand Island Central Catholic State Champs in 81 87 88 92 93 and 94 runners up in 95 
and 96. SCOTUS, they're looking for their ninth state championship. They won in 86 in 90, 95 through 99, and last year. They're the defending state champions in Class C1. They are 28-0. The Crusaders are 27-4. There's John Peterson, the head coach of SCOTUS, in his 26th year. An amazing 222-6 over the past eight seasons as the head coach of SCOTUS. That's, an, a, that's a phenomenal run this Shamrock program has come on. That's just incredible. And again, it's just a credit to um, John and his staff as well as the, the athletes that they've had at SCOTUS. Um, just some great fine athletes. There are a lot of multi-sport athletes here. We've seen that in the past as well, and, and that's helped them out here on the court. If anyone can knock them off, most observers feel it is this Crusader team, a team with a lot of tradition in their own right. This should be a great one. Jennifer Sackett will begin on serve for Columbus SCOTUS, and the Class C-1 state championship is underway. And it starts with a serve for Jennifer Sackett, who led this team in aces this year. And again, coming into this match, tough serving is key and also ball handling. Those are two things that both teams are going to want to make sure that they do well. SCOTUS with a lot of strengths, as you might imagine, on a 28-0 team. The Crusaders as well, 27-4, a phenomenal season as well. Left-handed swing and the kill right in the middle of that attack from number nine, Renee Byerman. Byron does a nice job again, that left-handed swing. Blockers need to make sure that they're aware of that. It's a little different on the setup as opposed to a right-hander. Jennifer Sackett serving SCOTUS to a 2-0 lead. Green, one of the two real big guns for the Crusaders. And there's a big swing from Laura Dolezal and another kill for the Shamrocks. And they're out to the early 3-0 lead here in game one. That's one thing you'll notice, this team is very balanced in their attack. There's a lot of players up there that you've got to make sure that you're respecting and getting a good block set up on. Shamrock's on serve and another ace, make it four nothing. Skotis with the lead and a timeout taken by Sharon Zavala to try to settle down her team as the Shamrocks lead it four nothing here in game one. Sunday night at 6.30 Central Time on NETV. Next Exit wants you to meet a man whose father went to Boys Town instead of prison and was forever changed by the experience. Plus, see how the annual Women's Wilderness Weekend transforms city women into survivors and meet a young woman who was transformed emotionally, physically, and spiritually by a terrible accident. Don't miss Next Exit tomorrow night at 6.30 Central Time on NETV. SCOTUS under John Peterson. They thought this year might be a bit of a rebuilding year. They lost five starters from last season. Not a bad rebuilding year at 28-0. Not too bad at all. And that's, again, a credit to just the strong program and the hard work that it goes into making a successful program. Redmond to Green. Sackett. And a big block up front by the Crusaders. And a side out to Grand Island Central Catholic, their first chance on serve. You see a nice, solid setup. Green gets her hands. She lines up shoulder to shoulder on her and, and sends it right back at her. 4 nothing. SCOTUS as Jody Schurz will serve. Sack it. Quick set. Big left-handed swing, and the block just misses wide. It'll be a side out back to Columbus SCOTUS. Four nothing. SCOTUS leading. Dolezal on serve. Green again. He's one of their two real go-to players. Crusaders will set it up. Redman, this time behind to Bowden. Byerman on the second pass finds the floor, and Skotis leads it 5-0. Great job by Byerman. She just takes that ball and sets it in, into the middle of the court. Again, that's an open area, and the, the defense has to pursue that and be prepared. Laura Dolezal, the junior on this Shamrock team. Nearly the ace, tough serve to handle. Green will send it over. Sack it. And a try on the far side, and it is Taylor Harsh with the kill. The leader on the team in kills, but Skotis a very well-balanced attack. Her numbers don't stand out as much as you might expect from the team leader. They've got several that they can go to at any time. And I think different situations call for different players to get more attempts, and, and that's why they've been successful. They've made good decisions with that. Another tough serve. Good received by Annie Seitz. Sackett tries again off the top of the block, and the Crusaders will set it up. In the middle, Moravec 
Fireman quick set, left-handed swing. Are they getting a touch? They are not. Side out, back to the Crusaders as it goes long. Again, nice aggressive attacking here by Byerman. Just, um, just a little bit wide on her swing. Bowden on serve. 6-0 Skotis, game one. Quick set, and there's the kill by Renee Byerman. Again, the left-handed attack. Very useful and very successful for the Shamrocks. And they ran her right behind the setter there, which, as a lefty, that's her on-hand side. A little bit easier for her to swing at that ball, and she gets a nice kill off of it. Now Renee Byerman will go back and serve. 6-0, SCOTUS with a lead. Good opportunity here for the Shamrocks. Sackett sets it up for Harsh. Good up by Schur, but they cannot control it, and it'll belong to the SCOTUS Shamrocks. Another point, 7-0. Tight ball at the net. Um, again, off the dig comes up tight. Difficult, uh, you can see uh, Natalie Morovic is trying to turn and really find that ball and not get in the net. Morovic. Through the block and to the floor, more of it gets it back on the side out for Grand Island Central Catholic, and now they need to serve a few points. Again, aggressive serving here is important, and that really helps your team relax, too. Jenny Green, good server throughout the year. Sack it. And this time the try from Ann Byerman, and it is wide, no touch, and there's the first point for the Crusaders. Byerman's coming around on kind of a slide. You'll see it's a one-foot takeoff. She just swings a little bit sharp and sends it out of bounds. 7-1 now. Skoda still in the lead. Big swing and big power from Lynn Weeder. And you're seeing the variety of attacks and the variety of people that the Shamrocks use in this very balanced attack. And you need to kind of notice, too, they're using um, a lot of one-foot takeoffs. Usually you see that behind the setter. There, that was in front of the setter. It's just a different type of swing. Hard for the blockers to set up. Redmond. And in the middle, big block of Moravec. Sights. And now Scotus has just got to get it over. Free ball now for the Crusaders. Can they take advantage? Redmond to Sights. Sackett tracks it down. Tough swing, but still to the floor. Taylor Harsh gets the point for the Shamrocks. It's 8-1. Harsh doesn't put a lot of power on that. She just puts a little finesse on that. She controls the ball. A lot of times the defense is dug in for that hard hit ball and a little slower speed drops it in front of them and that's what happened there. Second timeout taken by the Crusaders with a score of 8-1 on the scoreboard. SCOTUS in the lead. Saturday, November 23rd, listen to Charles Dickens' holiday classic, A Christmas Carol, like you've never heard it before. It's a car talk Christmas Carol, starring your favorite radio hosts, Tom and Ray. They'll be joined by a parade of NPR celebrities like Bob Edwards and Susan Stamberg. It's a hilarious car talk Christmas Carol on the Nebraska Public Radio Network. Tune your radio to NPRN, Saturday, November 23rd, beginning at 9 a.m. Central Time. Eight one, Scotus with the lead over Grand Island Central Catholic, and Byerman serving for the Shamrocks. Redmond will give Sites a try again. Byerman keeps it going, and now a free ball for the Crusaders on the second pass. Good job by Dolazol. There's Harsh again, and Taylor Harsh with another kill and a point for Scotus. Harsh does a great job. Aggressive swing here. Here's that hard-driven ball that she's so good at. Sends it right in front of the defense. 9-1 Columbus Scotus. They've allowed three points scored on them coming into this final in the tournament. Now four with the point the Crusaders have. And that shot is a touch. A side out back to the Crusaders who are trying to come from behind against a team that's very difficult to do that against. Definitely, there's so much um, a, a power there, and, and again, consistency in, in Scotus's plays. You got to really work to make them create errors or, or problems. Tipped over the block. Crusaders will set it up for sights. Sack it on the second pass, right into the middle of the floor, and a side out back to the Shamrocks. Just a great job by Sackett to feel that opening. The, the um, Central Catholic group is a little bit unorganized, hustling around. She drops it right in the center of the court. Taylor Harsh will serve. 9-1 Scotus. Tap 
Swift over the block, and that time the Crusaders taking a page out of the Shamrock book as Schurz sends it right to the floor. Second and Dozel kind of both going for it. Nobody really committed to taking it. That ball would have been up otherwise. 9-1 Shamrock serve is long and right back over to the Shamrocks on a side out. Substitution now is Nicole Milak and Renee Byerman check back in for SCOTUS. And Milak will head back to serve. She missed only six serves all year. Very good in that role as a back row player. That's incredible. That's a great job. Full head of steam. Milak goes after it and that will side it out back to Grand Island Central Catholic. Again, aggressive attacking here. Uh, Redmond takes it, gets off the hand of the Milak, but again, not able to control it, not quite in good body line with the ball. Sights on serve, tough one to handle. Shamrock set it over, good opportunity now for the Crusaders. Redmond sets it for Green, and Green finds the corner. The Crusaders are on the board again. One at a time needs to be their philosophy, and the tough serve really started and gave them that opportunity to score there. Green with 312 kills in the regular season. Big block up front by the Crusaders. Redmond, and now there's Green again. Skotis a little out of sync. Good opportunity here. Redmond, quick set, tapped over the block. Sackett's there. Dolezal. Battle at the front, and the Crusaders send it long. And a side out back over to Scotus. Nice rally there. Again, both teams really scrapping here on defense. A nice ball played up off the block, sent over just a little bit too deep. It was a good idea that open corner was there. Sack it on serve. Sure is in the middle. I'll try Byerman. And they will miss wide off the shot from Ann Byerman and a side out back to Grand Island Central Catholic. Skoda still leading 9-2. Jody Schurz trying to serve the Crusaders back into the match. Sackett tapped over. Redmond now on the far side to try for Bowden and into the net goes Skoda and a point for Grand Island Central Catholic. And Slowly but surely, the Crusaders are creeping back into it. And really, they're coming with some aggressive serves here. They kind of have relaxed and are going um, aggressive at them with that serve that's helping them control the offense of SCOTUS. Redmond sets it up. Tough one to handle for Jenny Green. It caught her behind, and it'll be a side out to SCOTUS. Green does a nice job trying to make a, a strong attempt on that. The ball's a little bit wide and hard for her to reach it across her body to get it in, in the court. Laura Dolezal serving. Redmond for Sites. Sackett, quick set, left-hander fires, and it's dug nicely. Notice again, Sackett, this time for Taylor Harsh. Punched up in the air, and now punched over the net. Fireman again for Harsh. And this time, Harsh delivers with the kill. Nice change of direction. Harsh took that down the line. She's been hitting cross court more into the six or the middle of the court. Here she takes it down the line and finds the court. Taylor Harsh has been extremely busy here in this first game for SCOTUS. 10 to three, SCOTUS with the lead. Fireman sets for Harsh again. Harsh finds the floor again, just inside the line. It's 11-3, SCOTUS. Harsh is really doing a terrific job. She's mixing up her attack in both speeds and placement on the court. And Sackett's doing a great job going to her. She's being successful. Dole's all served. Redmond does a nice job to keep that one in a position where her attacker can get it. Redmond again. Good set. Second pass. Crusaders dig. Green's try. And on the second pass, Byerman sends it over. Byerman to Byerman. And they deliver the kill. The Byerman combination delivers a point for SCOTUS. That's a great combination. And you can also see a right side header being in there, being aggressive, setting that quick transition. A lot of right side players usually push it to the outside. Um, not um, here on the SCOTUS team. They're doing a great job transitioning. 12-3, SCOTUS. Sackett. Here's Harsh again. 
and Harsh with another kill. Blockers are getting real frustrated. She's been hitting cross. She's been hitting line. They're trying to adjust here. She used the blocker's hands. Um, she's just being a smart attacker. 13-3. Skoda's with a lead here in game one. Green. Everybody to the floor to get it. And still Skoda's gets it over. That's hustle. Redmond. Quick set. Moravik. And an into the net call against the Skoda Shamrocks. It'll be a side out to Grand Island Central Catholic. And they need a run. Bowden on serve. Sack it. And there's Byerman off the top of the net. Green's try. Put up by Milak. Harsh taps it over the block. Green again. Byerman for Harsh once more. And that time a little low and into the net. A point for the Crusaders. I believe that's first air by Harsh outside. Again, the ball was a little bit low and hard to get across the net. And Annette serve will send it right back over to Scotus on the side out. Lynn Weeder checks in for Milok, and the six foot junior will head into the front row. 13 4, Scotus. And Byerman on serve. Redmond sets for Green. Side out again, Grand Island Central Catholic. Green, somebody who really has been a key part uh, of the Crusader offense. They're going to need to continue to go to her. She's moved to the back now. Let's hope she can be aggressive with the serve as well and help from that area. Sackett sets it for Harsh. Big swing. Good coverage in the back by Taryn Ketter. Redmond for Seitz. And Seitz delivers the kill for Grand Island Central Catholic. Point for the Crusaders. Great aggressive swing by Seitz. It's a, kind of a tight ball. You can see she's coming in aggressively. She really gets the seam of the block and gets the kill. 13-5 now. Sack it. There's Weeders try. Crusaders stay with it. Free ball now for Scotus. Quick set, Weeder. Swings wide. Point. Grand Island Central Catholic and a timeout taken by the Shamrocks. When it looked like Scotus was going to roll, the Crusaders got on a roll of their own and they've closed to within seven at 13 to six. And an impressive run on serve for Grand Island Central Catholic. They've played even through the last five points. Now they just need to make some ground up. They're also being aggressive up at the net here. We saw that quick swing by Sides getting in the gap. They need their offense to become more effective for them. Um, and that ball handling. They've been a little bit tight with their ball handling at the net. That makes it difficult for Redmond to um, give them good balls. They're relaxing a little bit, get that offensive system going for them. They, they have the firepower to do it. 13-6. Columbus Scota still in the lead, but a little more confidence on that bench from Grand Island Central Catholic. Thirteen six as Jenny Green will serve. Sackett sets for Harsh. Sites. Now Sackett will try again. This time sets behind for Byerman and Ann Byerman gets it back for the Shamrocks on the side out. Byerman swinging on the right side. They got her the ball right, um, right where she needed it. Used the block of sight, sends it out of bounds. 13-6, Skotis leading. And Byerman on serve. Sent over by Moravec. Sack it for Harsh. Off the net, the block falls and back to the Crusaders on the side out. Get great block setup, great closure by Natalie Morovic. She gets over there, makes um, a solid block, difficult for Harsh. Crusaders trying to creep back into its second for Harsh. And Harsh just inside the line and back to the Shamrocks on the side out. Scotus with a seven point lead. Amber Coolis was there, just again, a great shot right on the line. It's a difficult call for her to, to know if it's in or out. Harsh on serve. Tough one to handle. Now, Scotus has it going their way, and Weeder delivers the kill. 
Weeder does a nice job. Quick transition. She's in there right away. Sackett's got her up in the air and giving her the ball where she can take advantage of it. She's got some light, nice long arms. Harsh serving for game one. In the middle, sure. Great up by Sackett. Dole's all. And now the Crusaders to work. Redmond setting it up. And Sykes delivers the kill and gets it back on the side out. Great placement by Sykes. She goes to the deep corner down the line. The defense um, of the uh, SCOTUS team is sitting right in the middle of the court. Tough ball for her to handle. Tough serve for the Shamrocks to handle. And it sails inside the back line. For a minute, it looked like it was going to sail long, but Weeder just catches it inside. And it's a side out back to SCOTUS game point number two. 14-6. As Milok will serve for the game. Sites. Punched up in the air and now Sackett quick setup. Byerman delivers and game one belongs to the Shamrocks. 15-6. SCOTUS defeats Grand Island Central Catholic in game one of the Class C1 State Championship. 15-6. The Shamrocks defeat Grand Island Central Catholic game two straight ahead from the Pershing Center in Lincoln. Venice, the tidal waters that flow through its famous canals now threaten to submerge it. Scientists race to stop a catastrophe, but can they save the sinking city of Venice? Next time on Nova. Tuesday night at 8 central time on NETV. Fred Rogers has entertained and educated children for more than 30 years through his extraordinary public television program, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. This July, in a White House ceremony, for his dedication to the well-being of children, his faith, his family, and for a career that demonstrates the importance of kindness, compassion, and learning, Fred received the highest civil honor our nation can bestow, the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Congratulations, Mr. Rogers. We're all lucky to have a neighbor like you. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, this is NETV. Fifteen six, Grand Island Central Catholic puts more points on the board than any opponent in the state championship. Combined. All combined, all of the games that SCOTUS has played in this state championship combined, but it's not enough to beat the Shamrocks. Let's look at game one stats as SCOTUS Dominant in kills, and that's really the big stat there. Kills and assists all in favor of the Shamrocks. Right, and those two, you know, obviously um, combined make sense there. Um, Diggs, too, aggressive defense. You know, um, Grand Island Central Catholic was being aggressive, particularly in the second half of game one. Um, but SCOTUS' um, defense really pulled through for him. SCOTUS has been doing it all season. They've won 57 straight matches. Of course, that encompasses more than just one year. That's a couple of years of wins for the SCOTUS squad. Their wins in this state tournament over Ord, and they blanked Ord. 15-0, 15-0. That is unbelievably hard to do. And I think that is a first time in the 31 years of the state um, volleyball tournament that has ever happened. And that, that is just incredible that that was um, accomplished by this team. And they came back last night in the semifinal and beat Wayne 15-2, 15-1. Grand Island Central Catholic got pushed a little in game one against Syracuse, but then they went through Chase County in the semifinals last night to make it here to this final. And I think everybody who looked at the C1 field saw this championship matchup between SCOTUS and Grand Island Central Catholic. I don't know that anybody saw the matchup we'll have later in our Class B championship. That field was wide open. Right. And we'll talk about that one between Elkhorn and Norris a little bit later on. But Annie Seitz getting set to serve for the Crusaders here in game number two as they get things straightened out at the scorer's table before this one gets started. Annie Seitz and Jenny Green, the two big guns for this Crusader team, a veteran group of Crusaders. And Byerman on the first swing delivers a kill and a side out right over to the Shamrocks. And Byerman is just a, does a great job. She gets in quick. She has a nice high reach as, as she does that. She often goes over the block and ends up um, terminating for her team. Redmond sets it for Bowden. And Bowden delivers with the kill. 
Found a nice swing. She takes advantage of the blocker's hands. They're right in front of her, and she chooses to use them instead of try to go around them. Schurz will serve. No score here, game two. Sack it for Byerman. Redmond will set it up now for Green. Big block, Sight sends it over, right back, and a good up by Schurz again. Bout it. Quick set, Byerman cannot get it over the net, and it's a point for Grand Island Central Catholic, and they take the lead. Again, good quick transition, but sometimes, again, the set's a little bit low, the blocker snaps a little bit, catches tape, and, and Grand Island Central Catholic scores with that. And then sends the serve long. It's a side out right back to the Shamrocks as Laura Dolezal will head back to serve. Dolezal nearly the ace, and it's punched over. Sack it, sets it, fireman. Big block by the Crusaders. Pushed over the block. Redmond. And now the Shamrocks with a good opportunity. Sack it. Quick try. And that delivers the kill. Taylor Harsh, who was so effective in game one, gets her first kill and gets the Shamrocks their first point. Again, nice job. The block isn't closed, you can see. Uh, and again, the timing on that is so important for you to be successful with the block. Blocking is a very difficult skill to master. And right through the block, Jenny Green delivers the kill and the side out back to Grand Island Central Catholic. Green, again, one of their strong hitters, does a nice job placement, tempo balls. Different speeds, different places are keys for attackers. Harsh, oh, what a swing from Taylor Harsh. She's had a lot of good ones. That was her best of the night. She's a nice aggressive swing. They're taking advantage of a smaller block over on the right side with Redman up. And Harsh, again, a great attacker, convert. Renee Byerman will serve 1-1 our score here. Game number two. Dotis with Sackett setting it up for Harsh again. And Harsh gets it to the floor. 2-1, Scotus with the lead here in game two. Harsh has a nice swing to six zone. Six is the middle back of the court. That's the kind of put numbered position on the court. Usually the defense is on the outside, and she catches it in between there. They have to pursue it. Often lands for a kill. Sackett over to Byerman. Great back set choice. Back it again. This time a back row swing from Dolezal. Green's try, and Green delivers for the Crusaders. Side out back to Grand Island Central Catholic. Nice set to the outside, Green. Green's aggressive. She goes hard at the block and wins that just by overpowering the block. The hands were there. 2-1 SCOTUS, side out again to the Shamrocks. And Green got kind of ran a few points for them back there in that serving position. That isn't what they wanted to do here. Byerman serving. Tough ball to set. She does a nice job. And then the big block is there. Scotus delivers and gets the point 3 1 for Scotus. Byerman will serve. Floats over, and it just catches inside the line. It's a point, much to the chagrin of some Crusader fans. It's an ace serve, 4-1. Tough ball, going toward the edge of the court, landed right on the line. 4-1. That time floating to the other side of the court. Sites is trying. Sack it, sets it for Harsh. And Harsh with another kill. 5-1, SCOTUS starting to pull away a bit. Sharon Zavala sees it as well, and she'll take the timeout. 5-1, SCOTUS with a lead. Really, both teams have been siding out here. Not a lot of scoring going on, siding out, but like you said, there's a four-point run here. We need to make that stop right away. Fran Island Central Catholic wants to get back in the flow. If you would like a copy of all or any part of the 2002 Nebraska High School Volleyball Championships, log on to net.unl.edu and click on the sports link or call 800-228-4630. NETV, Nebraska's home for sports. Crusaders trying to get the crowd going, trying to get their team going here, trailing 5-1 in game two. SCOTUS wins game one, 15-6. 
Crusaders with four losses on the year, three to SCOTUS and one to Aurora. Good record, though, against the state tourney field, combining B and C1 schools. They're five and four this year with three of those losses coming to SCOTUS. So against the rest of the field, Grand Island Central Catholic five and one this year. Awful good record against the state tournament field. 5-1 SCOTUS leading here in game two. Seitz. Set up and on the slide. Weeder just misses it long. Side out right back to the Crusaders. And into the game for Grand Island Central Catholic. Amber Coolis returns and she'll go back to serve. Coolis, the sophomore. With 25 aces to her credit on the year. Harsh. Seitz will try, and Seitz delivers the kill, and the Crusaders get their second point. Great swing by Seitz. She's going again. That sixth zone is a vulnerable zone on most teams' defense. It's going between people, and, and that means pursuit. Harsh's try, and that's a good swing again. Harsh finds the hole in the back and gets it to the floor. Harsh has just been phenomenal tonight. She's just doing a great job and got to credit Sackett also. She's seeing that and continues to utilize her. They've got so many choices, but this is working. You got to go with the, what's working. Redmond. And now the Crusaders back to it. Scotus now will try. Punched up in the air. Grand Island Central Catholic with a chance. They do recover. Sackett. Tries now for Dolezal. Good up again by Kulus. Great rally here. Try again from Dolezal. Redmond sets it. Punched up. Can they get it? No, they cannot. The kill for Jody Schurz. She's a great rally by both teams. Good defense, aggressive swing. Um, Grand Island Central Catholic needs to feel good about that. They need to take this now with the serve and, and try and, and get the momentum on their side. Set up for Dolezal. Again, good up in the back by Kulus. And the kill for Jenny Green. Or excuse me, for Seitz. Annie Seitz with the kill. In great defense we're seeing by both teams here, and, and that's giving our attackers chances to continue to swing at it. Redmond on serve, 5-3 now. Scotus with a lead. Sack it. Tough ball to set. Does a nice job. Seitz just punches it over. Great aggressive play, though. Dolezal. Now a good one for Seitz to handle. Dolezal's try again, and she just catches the inside of the line, side out back to Skotis. Good shot by Dolezal. Dolezal does a nice job, works hard at the sideline. That ball over there, a lot of times the left side kind of creeps in, and a long rally, you can catch them if you hit the wide side. Nicole Milock serving for Skotis. Deep serve. Seitz's try. Sackett, quick set, big swing from Byron. By Green. Nice job to keep it alive. Sackett again, this time for Dolezal. Redmond keeps it going. Seitz with an opportunity. And Seitz is delivering all game two for the Crusaders. Seitz is just being aggressive. There's balls that are up there, and she's going at him aggressive. Some balls aren't in great condition, but she's going after him hard, and it's paying off for her. Sackett for Dolezal. They've been really working it to Dolezal here in game two. Sack it again on the second pass. It's time to swing from Bowden. Battle at the net, and it's won by Jennifer Sackett. Sackett's probably smallest in the front row there, but she goes up strong as a setter. Got to make those plays and make a strong decision. She does and wins the battle at the net. Jennifer Sackett on serve into the net side out right back to Grand Island Central Catholic and momentum a little bit more on the Crusaders side here in game two they just are playing aggressive and they should they, they've got nothing to lose and they're going out and doing some nice things sure serve Byerman can they get it they cannot Byerman with a side out right back to the Shamrocks of Scotus Again, these, these uh, aggressive players and, and defense-wise, um, we're seeing them really swinging hard at the ball and then defense getting hands on it, chasing down balls. It's great. Dolezal serve. Redmond. Seitz. 
Sackett now will set it up for Harsh. And Taylor Harsh with a kill. 6-3, SCOTUS in the lead. Harsh again is converting on the outside. She's just doing a tremendous job of mixing up her attack. She's reading the block that she has up there and making wise decisions. Redmond to Green. Block up front. Now Sackett will set it up. Left-handed swing from Byerman that delivers the kill. Another point for Scotus. It's 7-3. Here you get to see they're doing a one-foot or that slide, but it's in front of the setter. As a left-hander, that is a easier, better way for her to get her hand on the ball and swing at it on a slide. Not very many teams do that. A serve for Laura Dolezal and a timeout taken by Sharon Zavala. She uses her second timeout here in game two with Scotus out now to an 8-3 lead. Scotus trying to keep the pressure on while the Crusaders just try to right the ship. And that huddle there has created an awful lot of state champions looking for their ninth here tonight. Log on to our member store for your favorite public television and radio videos, DVDs, CDs, books, clothing, and more. It's easy to shop online. Just log on to net.unl.edu and click on the shopping bag icon. 8-3, SCOTUS with the lead over the Crusaders. Blue hair optional tonight at the Pershing Center, although not for those guys. <laughs> blue sparkly hair, yes. not just blue. Not just blue hair. That's the upgraded model. That's right. Got to pay extra for the sparkly part. Hey, this is the state final. You got to have it all. Districts, it's just flat blue hair. Now it's the sparkly That's hair. That's right. Green taps it over. Set up for Harsh. Good dig by Schurz. Punched into the back. Sackett tries to keep it alive. She cannot. Good job by the Crusaders just to keep that one alive, and it paid off. That's, that's just a great um, shot. Moravec pushed it deep. Everybody thought it was going to come over short and tight because it was tighter than that. Just a great execution. That one caught the top of the tape, and that served back over to the Shamrocks on the side out as they go back to Lynn Weeder in the front row. Renee Byerman into the back row to serve. 8-3, SCOTUS. Punched back and just catches inside the line. Again with the fist, just punching it over. That's working. That's a new technique. It's difficult to control the ball, and it is landing. The last two have both landed just in the deep corners. Good placement. I don't know if it was good control, but it worked. Harsh's try, and there's another big kill for Taylor Harsh, who's been very aggressive and they've been feeding her the ball consistently tonight and when she matches up over here on redmond she really has a definite height advantage and byerman serving eight three scotus here in game two looking for their ninth state championship sites sackett sets up for harsh again harsh delivers the kill nine three scotus in the lead Harsh, you can see again, the matchup here is really a mismatch. Redmond struggles to get her hands above the net, and, and that's nothing she can change. And so Scotus is really continuing to take advantage. Fireman, tough serve there. Crusaders do a nice job, and then deliver with the kill. Natalie Moravec back to the Crusaders on the side out. Natalie Moravec did a great job staying very aggressive. That's what uh, um, Central Cla Catholic really needs to do is continue to be aggressive and hang in there. Kulus in to serve. Sackett sets behind for Weeder. They cannot get it over. It's to the floor, and it's a point for the Crusaders. 9-4, Scotus' lead down to five. Schurz does a nice job. She matched up and stayed tight with her at the net. Sackett, harsh. Sights, and now Redmond. Good try now for Scotus. Crusaders keep it going. Green sends it over, but sends it long. And that'll be a side out back to the Shamrocks. Crusaders did a nice job trying to get an attack off there. That's what they want to do, try and be aggressive. Just a little bit of a, a, a long swing there. Redmond for Sites. Blocked up front by Weeder. 
into the hole in the floor and the side out again to the Crusaders. Smart volleyball. Redmond has done a nice job. She's just put, done this every, you know, infrequently and, and just at the right times to give her team the ball. Serves it into the net, though, and we go back to the other side on the side out. And Renee Byerman is back in along with Nicole Milock. Milock will head back to serve. Redmond for Sites. Do it up by Milock. Byerman punched right back the block by Jody Schurz. Jody Schurz does a nice job. She's lined up. Byerman's coming in, and she makes that adjustment for the left hand. Sets up perfectly. Sights on serve. Sack it to Dolezal. Sights across. Sack it. Quick set. Byerman. Aggressive swing, but the Crusaders were ready. Here's Green. Blocked again. Schurz will just send it over. Byerman sets it for Dolezal. Off the block. And a side out to SCOTUS. Jennifer Sackett will serve. Redmond to Green. Huge block again. Green taps it over but out. And it's a point for SCOTUS. 10-4. The Shamrocks leading in game two. They're really doing a nice job setting up on Green. Green's trying to continue to be aggressive. She's going to make a some different shot here. She's uh, effective earlier. Sack it into the net and back over to the Crusaders. Jody Schurz serving for Grand Island Central Catholic. Sack it on the right side. Tipped up. Crusaders trying to track it down. And a free ball now for the Shamrocks. Can they do it with Dolezal? Good up by Seitz. Punched across and come the Shamrocks again, trying Dolezal again. Seitz, tremendous job, but they cannot get anyone there to get it. Too tight to the net and a side out back to the Shamrocks. Got some good defense and some aggressive swinging here, and both teams are doing a nice job with that. Um, they got to continue to control that, though. Kind of cushion that ball, and that would come up a little bit softer for their setter. 10-4, SCOTUS. Byerman with the kill. Point for the Shamrocks, 11-4. Four points from a state championship. Byerman does a great job. Real aggressive swing here. She works hard to the deep corner. Nice, hard swing. Redmond, sights from the back. Sackett, harsh, and finds the hole in the defense. 12-4, SCOTUS leading. A couple balls here have gone deep to the um, left sideline. Um, Sykes needed to make sure she stays wide and play into the court. Redmond to Sykes. Byerman sets it up, and there's a violation against Skoda's side out back to the Crusaders. Called the lift there. They felt that ball sat in Sackett's hands a little bit too long. Sackett, quick for Byerman. Great swing. Nice quick transition. She was, um, Byerman was up in the air, and Sackett handed a right to her. 12-4, Skoda's leading. Byerman on serve again. Sights for Green. Great, Great up. up. Well, Byerman not right on the floor. Green again. Huge block up front by Lynn Weeder. Point for Scotus. Weeder does a super job here. Great setup. Look how she reaches over, sends that ball down to the floor quick. Two points from the title as Byerman will serve. Too tight to the net. And it's 14-4, SCOTUS. Match point number one coming up. Byerman serving for the Shamrocks' ninth state championship. Into the net. And we go back to the other side on the side out. Match point number one averted. 
as Jenny Green will serve for the Crusaders. Quick set, Harsh's try. Kind of shouldered over there by Shures. Hey, but whatever it takes at this point. Sykes. Sack it for Dolezal from the back. Cut up by Green. Redmond on the second pass. Harsh keeps it alive, and Dolezal will just send it over. Redmond has to keep it in play, and she crosses over. It's a side out to the Shamrocks, serving for the match. Ann Byerman. Match point number two. Looking for that ninth state championship, second in a row. Redmond for Sites. Sackett. Battle at the net and won again by Moravec. And the Crusaders stave off elimination again. Moravec does a nice job. The ball's up at the net. You got to go up aggressive, and she does just that. Gets her hands right across there. She's ready to stop it. Kulus in to serve. Sackett. Big swing by Weeder. This time, Harsh will try. Redmond sets it for Sites. Sites again. And Sites delivers the kill. First time, not a charm, but the second time, a point for Grand Island Central Catholic. Just aggressive. She's up in the net, and that's what Grand Island Central Catholic needs to do. It pops up to her. She doesn't even think. She steps right up and swings hard back at it. Harsh. And Harsh with another kill. And now, match point. Number three for SCOTUS. Taylor Harsh, who's been so active tonight, serving for the match. Sites. And she just gets it inside the line, and match point number three is shoved aside. Sites has really stepped up here. She's decided that we need to work hard now, and she's taking control that she's in the front row. Mary Wagner in to serve. Dolezal taps it up. Sites cannot keep it in play. And the side out back to SCOTUS. And their fourth shot at winning a state championship comes right now. Nice job by Dolezal. Just a change of both teams have been swinging hard. A nice short tip. Very effective. Nicole Milak to serve for the championship. Misses it wide, and the Crusaders get it again. The fourth time goes awry for SCOTUS. The Crusaders, though, not gaining any ground on their side when they get the chance. Sack it. Quick set. Fireman with a huge swing and a kill. And Fireman, just, she does a tremendous job. She's in there so quick on transition. She's in the air, and Sack it just to, has to pop it up there. The block can't get there quick enough. Sack it back to serve for the championship. Bowden. Scotus now a try. Big swing from the right side by Byerman. That may have gone out. But if you don't know, you got to play it. Great up by Sites to keep it alive. Sack it. Big left-handed swing by Byerman. The block is there and a violation. It never got over the net. It never got over, four hits, and back over to Grand Island Central Catholic. Getting a nice the front slide by a Byerman, just a little bit low on the contact. Sures to serve again. And the serve is long. Match point number six. As Dolezal will serve. She wasn't even thought to be playing this year. Lacerated her pancreas in May and now serving for the championship. Green. And Green just gets it in, but a touch is called on Dolezal. Dolezal called for the touch and a side out back to Grand Island Central Catholic. The up official is right over top of it. He felt that um, Dolezal on that attempt did make a contact. Bowden serve. Sack it for Harsh. Great up. Look, look at the hustle by the Crusaders. Wow. Harsh again. Taps it over and gets it to the floor. When power won't do, maybe finesse will work. And it did right there. And that's just, again, the smart attacking of this on SCOTUS team. Harsh has been tremendous tonight. Lucky number seven 
for the state championship. Seventh match point, Byerman on serve. Moravec. And Moravec delivers with the kill as Byerman touched it in the back. And another side out for the Crusaders. Crusaders, like you said, are hanging tough here. They're doing a great job. They got to really work to kind of climb in here, though, when they have the serve. Set up and the kill for Lynn Weeder. And a side out again to the Shamrocks. How about an eighth try? 14-5, Scotus trying to close out the Crusaders, but it's been a tricky proposition. Redmond for Sites. She's had a huge game, too. Back row attack. Sites again to keep it alive. Sackett for the match. Long again, and the Crusaders get it back on the side out. This is great. Good volleyball here. Both teams are just giving all they have right now. Kulus to serve. Sack it for Harsh. Harsh misses wide. And Grand Island Central Catholic finally breaks the spell of five as they get a point. 14-6, Scotus's lead at eight. Serve. Goes long as Harsh just got out of the way of it. Tried to make a play and just had enough control to back off. She followed it all the way. She's supposed to do that. Just made it a little bit tight. Match point number nine. Redmond for Sites. The block. Great up by Green. And there it is. State championship number nine for the Scotia Shamrocks. They win it. 15-6. 15-6. Columbus Scotus, the champions of Class C1, will be back to award the winners their medals in a moment on NETV Sports. Nebraska Public Power District, together with your local public power utility. Uncover Titanic's ghosts. 1,500 perished when the ship went down. 90 years later, science is trying to give names to the unidentified victims. The unknown child deserves to be known. Are we too late? We don't know yet. Secrets of the Dead. Wednesday night at 8 central time on NETV. NETV is a service of the Nebraska Educational Telecommunications Commission. Columbus Scotus defeats Grand Island Central Catholic 15-6 and 15-6. And now let's go to our state volleyball announcer, Dwight Weiniger, for the awards presentation. The Nebraska School Activities Association is delighted to have medals and trophies for both of these outstanding teams. Presentations will be made by NSAA Board of Control members Bob Reznicek of Omaha Westside and Nate Steinman from Southern Valley and U.S. Bank representative Aaron Gilson. Now here are the awards for the Class C-1 runner-up, Grand Island Central Catholic High School. Will head coach Sharon Zavala and your assistants please step toward the middle of the court to present the silver medals to each team member. Players, as your name is called, please come forward to receive your medal. Number 17, Katie Dowd. Number 16, Whitney Rausch. Number 15, Jennifer Dunning. Number 14, Natalie Moravec. Number 13, Laura Ganewa. Number 12, 
Annie Seitz. Number 11, Kayla Krolikowski. Number 10, Jenny Green. Number nine, Ember Coolis. Number seven, Mary Wagoner. Number six, Bridget Chapleski. Number five, Jamie Redman. Number four, Jody Schultz. And number three, Megan Bowden. And now, all of you are welcome to receive the runner-up trophy for your school. Congratulations, Grand Island Central Catholic High School. And now, to the champions, Columbus Scotus High School. First, head coach John Peterson, we have a special award for you. And now, coach, hand out the gold medals to your championship team members. And number 14, Mandy Schumacher. Number 13, Heidi Sabota. Number 12, Lynn Weeder. Number 11, Michelle Flint. Number 10, Ailey Belt. Number 9, Renee Byerman. Number eight, Taylor Harsh. Number seven, Ann Fireman. Number six, Steph Lyons. Number five, Nikki Van Ekron. Number four, Laura Dolezal. Number three, Taryn Ketter. Number two, Jennifer Sackett. And number one, Nicole Milak. And now, to these outstanding athletes in their school, here is the 2002 Class C-1 State Volleyball Championship Trophy. Congratulations, Columbus Scotus High School. And ETV sports coverage of the 2002 Nebraska State High School Volleyball Championships are brought to you in part by NPPD, always there when you need us. By Brian LGH, the first name in healthcare. By ACE, the public alliance for community energy, your hometown choice for natural gas. And by Education Quest Foundation, improving access to college through scholarships, community grants, and college planning services. SCOTUS is your Class C-1 state champion. We'll talk with the players and coaches in a moment from the Pershing Center in Lincoln on NETV Sports. Programming on NETV is provided in part by Brian LGH Medical Center in Lincoln. 
It's nationally recognized by AARP for its work in orthopedics. Ryan LGH also received nationwide acclaim for its success in cardiovascular services. And the Medical Center has been recognized nationally for its support of working mothers. Brian LGH, the first name in healthcare. I'm Karen Gibbs. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, this is NETV. Columbus SCOTUS now nine state champions, winning 15-6 and 15-6 today over the Grand Island Central Catholic Crusaders. Now 29-0 and undefeated state champions. They've won 58 straight matches. We could go on and on, but... Probably best to let the coach do that. John Peterson in his 26th year wins another state championship. He's standing by with our Kathy Wieskamp. Congratulations, John. This is the ninth one for you. Everyone's great. They're all different. How is this one different? I know they're all special. Well, you know, Kathy, we've had such a great year, and, you know, we felt like we played so well all year long. We want to make sure we played really well tonight. I'm not sure we played well all through the match. We did some great things, and... It's kind of a relief to, uh, in a sense, to get it over with because we knew we had to play pretty well to be GICC, and uh, we're thrilled. It's just a great match. Did you, at the beginning of the year, anticipate you being in this position, a perfect record at the end of the season, and you lost a lot of players last year? Yeah, we had six seniors. One was injured at the end of the year, so we really lost five starters. And No, I didn't think we would, although I knew, we knew that our uh, young kids were pretty good, and they just stepped up, and they just got better and better as we went along. Our defense carried us for a long time. And, and our attack improved, and you know, and tonight, uh, you know, Renee Byron and Taylor Harsh got, you know, when we got on the ball, they put it down. Well, your your team really, you know, you kind of think of them as a great defensive team, scrappy, but their offense tonight seemed like they they were just comfortable. Your setter Sackett did a great job distributing the ball. Well, she has. She's just improved. You know, last year she was a starting DS for us, and and uh, you no, know, nice, just really a nice, solid athlete. Uh, she, she got so she could set about anything, and it was pretty consistent, and I and she did distribute it pretty well. Tonight, though, I said, get it to Byron, get it to Harsh, and she did it, and they, and they put it down for us. Well, it's great when they listen to you, isn't yeah. it, Coach? I, I also, you know,
you know, coming into this match tonight, you guys have seen Grand Island Central Catholic several, several times. It's hard to beat a team many times in a row in one season, and to be here in the state finals, that situation intensifies the match. You're, you two have a great rivalry anyway. Yeah, I don't know how many times we've played in the finals, but it's been a lot of times, and our kids just, uh, you know, we, we looked at it, we just had to play another match, we just had to try and play as well as we could. It couldn't be, didn't matter if it was GICC or not, and, and I, and, and just worry about how hard we could play, how well we could play, and I think our kids stepped up and did that tonight. One of your players, I believe it was Renee Byerman, made a comment to the media the other day that we strive for perfection, and, and is that in practice is to make them get at, be at that level to play in these type of competitions. Is that something that you really focus on, or uh, their execution? Well, I think every coach is trying to get your kids to play at the highest level you can, and you know, and, and we try and hit the ball, you know, consistently and without errors. And you know, in the first game, you know, we had about. I thought four or five attacks that we normally don't hit out and you know part of it's to the pressure of the game part of it's GICC and you know but our kids stepped up as a level as the game went along and, and played tough. Well you did a great job coach congratulations another one but again congratulations. Thank you Kathy. Kevin back to you and Continue us on. Thank you, Kathy. Kathy Wieskamp with the head coach of Columbus Scottish, John Peterson. A lot of things to learn when you talk about high school volleyball. Coach John Cook of Nebraska Volleyball knows all too well of all the variety of things to learn. Let's talk about, as we listen to John Cook, with a quick tip on the cross-court attack. Cross-court attack is probably the most common attack in volleyball. It's the easiest uh, attack for attackers to hit. And basically, uh, when they attack cross-court, they have more court to hit into. So if you think about uh, the, the length of the court, hitting cross-court diagonally allows more room for error. So most attackers will attack cross-court. Uh, in order to do that, they have to get their feet there. It has to be a good set and they hit it with their wrist. And uh, as you'll see in the state tournament, most of the attackers will be attacking cross court. The exceptional attackers will be able to do that and also hit down the line. Well, the camera a little bit damaged, but nonetheless, we learn more about the cross court attack. Back with more from the Class C1 state champions, Columbus SCOTUS in a moment on NETV Sports. Fifteen six, fifteen six. Columbus Scotus wins the Class C one state championship. Kathy Wieskamp standing by with some of the winning Shamrocks. Hi, I'm here with Renee Byerman. Renee, what a great match! Came out, great tournament. First of all, this one is really special as a senior. Yeah, it is. You know, it, our, our goal was to come out this year and you know and, and finish out on top. You know, we've, it's been our tradition in Scotus. I, I I didn't want to be the, the person to let it down my senior year. You know. You came in this tournament, your first match, you had 15-0, 15-0. That had to be quite an impressive and a great feeling to get started off. It was. It, it's always nice to start off on, on, on a nice foot like that, you know, that you can kind of, you know, ease your way into the tournament, you know, and just, your, your game's get harder as you go, but it gives you, gives you a little bit of confidence to start off with. You've been such an important part of this offense. Um, last night you had 10 kills, tonight very effective. Some great quick set attacks in the middle. Uh, lots of fun for you out there. That, that's been kind of tradition all year. Yeah, it has. I, I, I love running like the slide threes and the quicks, you know, and anything to throw the offense off. You know, it's, it's just, it's fun. Well, you did a great job. Congratulations on another state championship. Thank you. Hi, this is Taylor Harsh, again, an outside hitter for the team. Just a tremendous night tonight. You were the go-to gal. Thank you so much, yeah. Jen and I, I don't know, we really worked really well together, and um, she's a really good setter, so. It was a really great matchup. Um, Sackett did a great job giving you the ball. You had a smaller blocker across the net, and you really took advantage of that situation. Is that something Coach talked about coming into the match, preparing you for? Yes, um, uh, Mr. Peterson did say that when um, the setter's up, she's small, and you can go line end. Um, Mrs. Tule also said that they have a really big seam in their defense, so you hit the ball seam, it's wide open. Well, you did a great job mixing up, great contribution to your team. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And Jennifer Sack at the center, the offensive coordinator here of the team. You did a tremendous job running team. You've got so many great hitters to choose from. Yeah. Tonight, it seemed like you knew had the right choices in your in your head. Yeah, they made it really.